Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the third video in the ADC series of the SDM32. In the previous videos we have already covered how to configure the ADC with the single channel, and how to use the polling mode, interrupt mode, and DMA to read the data from the potentiometer. We also saw how to deal with the cache coherency, while using the DMA in a Cortex-M7 based MCU. Today we will start covering the multiple channels of an ADC. We can use polling mode and interrupt mode to read multiple channels also, but the ADC configuration varies across the devices. While I was testing it across different MCU series, I needed to make a lot of adjustments to make it work. Therefore I decided to cover multiple channels using only the DMA mode. Here the DMA mode does not mean that the conversion will continue forever, and the interrupt will trigger at a continuous rate. We can also use the DMA mode to only fetch the data when we need it, just like the polling mode. So this video is split into two halves. First we will see the use of DMA in the normal mode to read the multiple channels of the ADC. And then we will see the DMA in the continuous mode, where it will fetch the data continuously. Let's start the IDE to configure the project. Here I have already created a new project, ADC Part 3. The clock is configured to run at maximum 480 MHz. Let's go to the ADC 1, and select channel 3 in the single-ended mode. You can see the pin PA6 got selected as the ADC 1 channel 3 pin. I want to configure the nearby pins for the other channels. Pin PA7 is ADC 1 channel 7. Here P in input P7 stands for positive input pin, and that is what we need for the single-ended mode. PC4 is ADC 1 channel 4. This one is in yellow, as we still need to enable the single-ended mode in the configuration. PC5 is ADC 1 channel 8 pin. Let's resolve the clock before we go ahead. Here the ADC peripheral is clocked by the PLL2P, which is clocked around 50 MHz. Here I am configuring it to run at 15 MHz clock. The ADC peripheral is also at 15 MHz, so I am using a prescaler of 10 to bring it down to 1.5 MHz. This is not a requirement, I just want to select low speed for the ADC, as there is no clock requirement for the potentiometers connected to the MCU. The ADC resolution is set to 16 bits. We need to enable the scan mode for multiple channels, but the cube does not allow us to do so. Let's scroll down to regular conversion mode. Here the number of conversions is still set to 1. Since we have 4 channels, let's set it to 4. The scan conversion mode is now enabled, and the cube will not allow us to disable it. The continuous conversion mode is used when we want the ADC to automatically start the conversion again for all 4 channels. But as I mentioned, we want to convert the data when we want, so let's keep it disabled for now. The end of conversion flag should be set once all the 4 conversions are over so set it to the end of the sequence. The conversion data management mode should be now configured to use the DMA, but we haven't enabled the DMA yet, so we will come back here later. Now we need to configure the ranks for the channels. I am setting rank 1 for channel 3, so it will be converted first. Rank 2 is for channel 4, so it will be converted second. Rank 3 is for channel 7, so it will be converted third. And finally rank 4 is for channel 8, so it will be converted at last. You can set the ranks according to the sequence, in which you want the channels to be converted. I am configuring the random sampling time, as there is no particular requirement for the potentiometers. Now let's go to the DMA section, and add the DMA for the ADC1. Keep the DMA in normal mode as we will use it only once. 
Also set the data width according to your ADC resolution. Now if we come back to the conversion data management, we have the options for the DMA mode as well. We want the DMA to run only once, so we will select one shot mode here. Alright that is all the configuration we need, so click save to generate the project. In the meantime, let's see the connections. I have connected four potentiometers to the four pins of the ADC1. The ADC pins are connected to the middle pins of the potentiometers. All the potentiometers are powered with 3.3 volts from the MCU, and the ground pins are connected to the ground to the MCU. Now before we start programming it, let's see the configurations for other MCUs as well. Here I have the configuration for the F446RE. I have selected four channels of the ADC1. F446 does allow us to enable the scan conversion mode, so we will enable it. The continuous conversion mode should be disabled, and the end of conversion should be set at the end of all conversions. Now we will set the number of conversions to 4. And then configure the ranks for all the channels, just like we did in the H750. Now go to the DMA section, and add the DMA for ADC1. Make sure that the mode is set to normal mode, and configure the data width as per your resolution. Also make sure that the DMA continuous request is disabled, otherwise the DMA will keep transmitting the data from the ADC. That is all we need to configure in F446. Now let's see the configuration for the F103C8. Let's go to ADC1, and enable the four channels. It also does not let us enable the scan conversion mode. Scroll down to the number of conversions, and set it to 4. Now the scan conversion is enabled. You can configure the ranks for the channels, just like other MCUs. Make sure that the continuous conversion mode is disabled. Now open the DMA section, and add the DMA for the ADC1. The DMA should be in the normal mode, and make sure that the data width is half word. The ADC in F103C8 has a resolution of 12 bits by default, so data width needs to be half word, that is 16 bits. Alright let's write the code now. Let's define a 16 bits array of 4 elements, we will store the data for the 4 channels here. Now inside the main function, start the ADC in the DMA mode. Pass the array that we just created, and we want to receive the data for 4 channels. Remember that we have configured the end of conversion flag to set when all the channels are converted. So the interrupt will trigger when all 4 channels are converted, and the conversion complete callback will be called. We can process the ADC data inside this callback, or we can also set another variable to indicate that the data has been received. Then inside the main function we will check if this variable is set, and then process the data here. Let's also increment the count variable every 500 milliseconds, to ensure that the rest of the while loop is working fine. Here I am calling the ADC DMA just once, let's test this part first. The warning is for this array, as the function expects a 32-bit pointer here, but we will leave it as it is. Let's build and debug the project now. Let's set a breakpoint inside the callback function. Here you can see the breakpoint got the hit. That means the DMA has finished the data transfer of all the channels. You can even see the data for all the channels in the live expression. Now if we run the code again, this breakpoint will not hit. That is because the DMA is in the normal mode, and hence it only runs once. The count variable is incrementing every 500 milliseconds, so the while loop is working fine. Now we can start the ADC in DMA mode whenever we need to read the data from the potentiometers. The DMA will fetch the data from all the channels, and once done, it will stop automatically. We will test it by calling the DMA inside this loop, which runs every 500 milliseconds. Alright let's debug the project again. 
The breakpoint is still set inside the callback function. We hit the breakpoint once. Now if we run the debugger again, we get another hit. The breakpoint is getting the hit every 500 milliseconds, that means the DMA is transferring data every 500 milliseconds. This is because we are repeatedly starting the ADC in DMA mode. Let's run the debugger without the breakpoint, and see if the data from all the potentiometers is being read. I am rotating the third potentiometer now, and you can see the third element of the array is increasing. I am fast forwarding the video. The value has reached the maximum 65535, as the potentiometer is rotated to the extreme end. Now I am rotating it in the opposite direction, and the ADC value is now decreasing. I will leave it around 30,000. Now I am rotating the second potentiometer, and you can see the ADC value increasing. Similarly if I rotate it in the other direction, the value starts decreasing. I will leave this one at around 20,000. Let's rotate the fourth one now. The ADC value is increasing, and it has reached the maximum. Now when we rotate it in the opposite direction, the value starts decreasing. I will leave this one at around 40,000. Finally we will rotate the first potentiometer. The ADC value is changing fine, just as the potentiometer is rotating. Let's leave this to around 10,000. Alright all the channels of the ADC are working fine. So we can use the DMA mode to read the data when we want, it does not need to fire the interrupt at a regular interval. You can write a condition, and call the DMA function inside it, so the conversion will only take place when the condition is met. Or you can even use it with the RTOS, where a separate task can be assigned to start the ADC in the DMA mode. This is it for the video. In the next video we will continue the ADC DMA, but we will use the circular mode to read the data continuously. We will continue the next video from this point itself, where I am leaving it today. That is it for now. You can download the project from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.